What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. This video is mostly going to be me talking about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. But before I get into that, really quick, I just want to talk about Christopher Nolan's comments about him wanting to do a horror film. He apparently, this is written up by Variety, where he had a conversation at a London British Film Institute on Thursday uh, when asked about Oppenheimer or addressing Oppenheimer and the horror elements that are in it. He said Oppenheimer has elements of horror in it definitely as I think is appropriate to the subject matter. I think horror films are very interesting because they depend on very cinematic devices. It really is about a visceral response to things and so at some point I'd love to make a horror film but I think a really good horror film requires a really exceptional idea and those are few and far between. So I haven't found a story that lends itself to that. My two cents on this is that I would love for Christopher Nolan to be a part of the horror genre with a classic. Maybe he could be responsible for Dog Soldiers too. Just throwing that out there. I would love to see his take on Dog Soldiers or some type of American remake of Dog Soldiers. But granted, I would prefer a sequel. And obviously, I would love to see him tackle movies like maybe Jeepers Creepers. But again, that's just wishful thinking. And that's an IP that's dead in the water. And we're likely just going to continue to get trash after trash after trash with that IP. He goes on to say, but I think it's a very interesting genre from a cinematic point of view. It's also one of the few genres where the studios make a lot of these films. And they are films that have a lot of bleak bleakness, a lot of abstraction. They have a lot of the qualities that Hollywood is generally very resistant to putting in films. But that's a genre where it's allowable. So I think he has a pretty good understanding of the significance of horror and I hope one day he does get to put his name attached to a horror classic from him because he's done a lot of films that I love a lot of classic things especially the Batman trilogy that I grew up with but let me know what you guys think about that let's shift gears into Beetlejuice 2. Okay so we've gotten a lot of things related to Beetlejuice 2 and important things that have come out over the past week or so that I want to just do a video dedicated to because a few of you have been sending me requests, do a video on Beetlejuice 2, share more rumors, so I'm gonna do that in this video. So as you see here, we got our official poster with the official title, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, yes, I think the title is stupid too. Beetlejuice 2 is my preferred title, but I get what they're going for because then business-wise, and just for the sake of them being humorous, I guess, if you get a third film, you then get to title the third movie Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And we all know if you're someone familiar with the lore of Beetlejuice, you need to say his name three times for him to appear. So that could be what they're trying to go for. But still, I think the name Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is, is stupid for a sequel title. Nevertheless, like I mentioned, I've had some of you send tweets my way wanted me wanting me to go over Beetlejuice 2 and since I haven't uploaded in two days I figured I'd just make a video to address some updates that I have about Beetlejuice 2. Now for the sake of this video I'm just going to say this stuff is rumored and alleged and yet to be confirmed by the studio or any actors. Several rumored bits that I've stated in the past have been confirmed by Willem Dafoe himself. Before I get into the rumored bits we had a recent plot description that was revealed stating that after an unexpected family tragedy Three generations of the Dietz family return to the small Vermont town of Winter River. I think that's actually in Connecticut, though. Am I mistaken? I don't think it's in Vermont. And it says paranormal empath Lydia Dietz begins to see the lecherous demon Beetlejuice, who haunted her as a teenager. His plans to finally marry Lydia are given extra urgency when his dead wife comes to life and begins to stalk the afterlife, hunting for him. Meanwhile, Lydia's teenage daughter embarks on a romance with a local teen. Now, that description confirmed my previous reporting, if you recall, how I put out that Dolores, Beetlejuice's wife, would be the villain in this story. Then Catherine O'Hara recently told this to People.com, talking about a scene she gets to share with Beetlejuice this time around. She said, I had a little two-person moment with Michael as Beetlejuice. I'd been in the first movie in group scenes with Michael, but in this, I had an actual moment where the two of us just... And it was just so crazy and thrilling, really, to just be face to face with Beetlejuice. Now, I will say this moment she's talking about is related to a search and rescue. As far as I know, that's all I will say about it. It's related to some sort of search and rescue involving those two characters, a rumored search and rescue for Beetlejuice and Delia. Delia has also done very well for herself since the last time we saw her. Lots of progress in her art career. If you follow me over on Twitter, you already know what I'm talking about. Here are some other rumored major events you can expect in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So for one, there's a plane crash that leads to heartbreak for many. 
there's a shark attack that also ties into said plane crash. Something sad happens to a returning star, but I'm not going to say who or what, of course. I'll just let you guys speculate as you please. Lydia's daughter, played by Jenna Ortega, spends the most time with the film's other villain. So one thing that I hadn't been seeing floating around on Twitter is who was the second villain. I kind of have given that away. For those of you who want to connect the dots, that should be enough for you to connect the dots as to who the second villain of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is. Because Jenna Ortega's character will spend the most time with this person in the film before the search and rescue has to go on for this character. Now, you guys can let me know, are you looking forward to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Why or why not? Down in the comment section below. I've also heard that this film is better than Hocus Pocus 2, but not as good as Top Gun Maverick, if that makes you hopeful for the film's quality. That's what I've had described to me, so it sounds like the movie is fine. And as I've talked about on my channel in the past, I am pleased with the story they've cooked up. There are elements of it that I want them to remove. I don't think they're going to remove them. I just think that certain elements in this story are a little bit unnecessary, over the top. But the nature of Beetlejuice itself is kind of over the top. But for the context, I think you would have to know what I know. And I'm not trying to overly spoil certain things about this movie. But let me know what you guys think about these rumored plot details. Who do you think is involved in the plane crash? Who do you think is involved in the shark attack? Who do you think they are alluding to when it talks about family tragedy? Some of you, countless of you, actually have been speculating on this topic. You are right. I'm not going to say what it is, but you are correct. If you know what I'm talking about, then you just need to know that you are correct. I will say that my biggest hope for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is that it can just be a legacy sequel that doesn't really tarnish the legacy of the original, which I don't think this one will do. And it's not like it's the most incredible story either. I've talked about this story in the past very vaguely, and I'm gonna just do that a little bit more now. The story that they have cooked up, I think takes the character of Lydia in a believable direction, takes the character of Delia in a believable direction, Jenna Ortega and her character, the stuff they're doing with Charles, all of this stuff is believable. It's understandable. It feels in line with where we could see these characters all these years later. The way Beetlejuice is handled and the fact that he's still trying to get married to Delia or Lydia, I should say, because of Dolores returning. All that stuff feels kind of believable and natural considering where we last saw them in that original film. There's also a lot, not a lot, but some other familiar faces from the original that will make an appearance. If you follow me on Twitter again, you probably already know who I'm talking about. Characters like Barb and I think the other guy's name was Adam. They are not in the movie, but the movie does address why they are not present. Those of you who are on Twitter, you already know the explanation. But for those of you who are not on Twitter, I again, am just not trying to overly spoil this movie for you. I think what they have done with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice will be pleasing to most people who grew up with the original it's not going to be better than the original. I would say this sounds like it's just an adequate sequel. And it sounds like it'll be one of the better films that we get in 2024 after all the stinkers that I have the unfortunate pleasure of watching. But that might change on Tuesday when I check out Dune Part 2. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you want me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.